What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another transfer video for you guys today. I haven't really done much uploading in the last two days, I will be real, it has been a long weekend, but it also hasn't been a lot of development and transfer news, so I thought I'm not going to just make two videos for you guys and just sit here and waffle for 10 minutes because you're not going to watch that, I'm not even going to want to edit that, and it's just going to look dead all around, so sorry that there hasn't been daily uploads, but there hasn't been any proper key news this week though. This week looks like it's going to be such a mad week and we're only into Monday already. There's been so much development. We finally got a transfer agreement with Bayer Leverkusen for Kai Havertz. Thiago Silva also looks like he's developing. The Bakayoko transfer also looks like it could be happening and it also looks like another deal that could favor favorably be going Chelsea's way. Ben Chilwell is also apparently having a medical, but I'm not going to go too deep into that because I don't think the sources are legit enough for me to actually make that proper headline. But Chelsea are active this week, guys, and it looks like it is going to be a great week to talk about Chelsea. So guys, get strapped and enjoy. And also, this before I start this video, as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and press that bell notification button as well to be a first guy to know whenever I release any content on this channel. Hit that like button and press the subscribe button. And yeah, let's go straight into the transfer news because this is looking like a very big day for Chelsea. Let's start off with the big news. Kai Havertz, transfer valuation looks to have finally been agreed upon by Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen. We already knew personal terms had been agreed. We already knew the contract was agreed. He had a five-year deal ready and waiting to sign. The only thing that we were waiting for was Bayer Leverkusen's valuation. If if and when Chelsea were going to match that valuation. Because we already know that it was never going to be a case of money when it came to Kai Havertz. It was just going to be a case of do we want to throw more the money now. Or do we want to try and find a smarter way around it. And typical Marina as usual. She's found a way to turn a winning situation into an even more winning situation. And yeah it's mad. We're looking at how much is it right now 80 million euros up front with the remaining 20 million being placed on the add-on so it still hits the 100 million that Bayer Leverkusen stepped up for him and said you need to pay this to get 10 million is is being put for regularly making the Champions League and another 10 million is to be released whenever Havertz wins trophies for the club so these are very easy add-ons for Chelsea to reach and for Bayer Leverkusen as well it means that they keep the most of the cash but they also get some of it at later stages as well which is good for us too because we're trying to focus on defensive reinforcements as well we already know the situation with the defenders and how we need to sell to buy when it comes to our defensive reinforcements this kept this has now kept an extra 20 million in the bank which will come very handy when it comes to wages i mean tiago silva's signing on fee will be the biggest thing that we need to worry about compared to bringing in the actual transfer because there's going to be no transfer fee involved when it comes to him also needing to sell in order to buy with Emerson, looking on his way out to Inter Milan. We also need to try and get rid of the defender as well. Recouping as much cash as we can for now is good for us in the long term. And £72 million up front, that's a great deal for someone like Kai Havertz's quality. The, re the other £10 million will just get paid within a season. And then the other £10 million is just going to be released whenever Kai Havertz wins another trophy, which could be one year or it could be two years. What this means is that they are self-sustainable add-ons. And this means that regardless of whatever the add-ons are and whatever it costs, it will be able to be recouped based on the money that we make throughout the season. If we qualify for the Champions League, then the Champions League money, prize money that we earn or the prize money that we've earned from wherever we finished in the Champions League last season is instantly just going to pay off that add-on as well. So... Marina's played this very, very smart. The only real worry about this entire deal was, are we going to hit the deadline? Are we going to hit that 28th of August deadline? And it looks like we're going to hit it now. We already know what the issues were with Manchester United and the Sancho one. They had the deadline. They didn't hit it. They stalled for too long. And now Borussia Dortmund have more of the power and Sancho's more willing to wait for another year. And I'm not going to lie. I saw the stuff that was happening with Sancho and Manchester United. I got a little bit paranoid. I'll be real. I got a bit paranoid. I was thinking, guys, the steel's here, but we kind of need to make a move on it. I'll be real about it. But now we have been making that move. Now we have finally got that transfer valuation agreed. This deal 
I've said this so many times, it's days away now. We're very close to this here we go comment from Fabrizio Romano and we already know as soon as that here we go comment comes, it's finished, the deal's done. We can finally relax and get the shirt and get the shirt number and everything. And Kai Havertz does look like he's going to be a Chelsea player. We've spoken enough times about the quality that he's going to bring to this Chelsea side. We've spoken about the versatility that he brings to the team as well. We've spoken how that's a key aspect of most of these Frank Lampard signings. Kai Havertz can play anywhere in midfield. He can play in centre attacking mid, he can play in centre mid. He can play as a DM as well. The I got roasted for this. I don't want him in the Makaleli role every week, but he has the defensive awareness to play there if we need to. We're not probably not going to play him there too much, but he can play there. He can also play on the right side as well. That's close to Hakim Ziyech. You can play in the center and on the right side too. And Timo Werner, who can play up front and, and as the outside forward too. Versatility, and that's a great aspect to have in this squad. So Kai Havertz to Chelsea. Nearly, nearly there. As soon as we get that here we go comment is when we can really celebrate. But this deal looks like it's being done. Second piece of news. We're going to talk about Thiago Silva. Now, this Thiago Silva to Chelsea rumours have been gaining hella steam over the last week. We knew that all we had to really wait for was the Champions League final. That's done now. Decent performance against Bayern Munich. I'll be real. I was unlucky not to get the win, but is what it is and with that Bayern squad we already know how dangerous they are they slapped us silly over two legs we already know how bad they are and even losing 1-0 isn't that bad Bayern Munich are the fair winners and they're the best team in Europe by a long shot but Thiago Silva will go back into the transfer news because I'm waffling Thiago Silva still believes he can play at the top level for another three to four years and Chelsea have offered him I'm hearing a 12-month contract with an option for a second, but I'm hearing also a two-year deal. I'm leaning more towards a two-year deal because the sources seem more legit. In personal terms, are already rumoured to be agreed between Thiago Silva and Chelsea. Fiorentina were meant to be the favourites for his signature, but I think since now we've got more interested, that's looking like a lesser option for him because he does want to keep playing at the top level and... Not going to try and sound cocky here. Chelsea are bigger than Fiorentina. It just is what it is. If you're going to have the option of one or the other, he's going to want to go for Chelsea. Two years, wanting to stay at, wanting to stay at the top level for three to four years. I'd say London is attractive as it is anyway, and Chelsea is going to give him the opportunity to play at the top level. It's also going to give him the opportunity to slow down at a much more respectable rate. I'll say, and this, we already know exactly what his leadership and what his experience can bring to the likes of Tamori, to the likes of Christensen as well. Two guys that need it, and Kurt Zuma as well. I, personally, I think the Kurt Zuma and uh, what's his name, Thiago Silva partnership. How am I forgetting the name when I'm talking about him? The Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma partnership is something that I'm really looking forward to because we're talking about the English barrier that could be an issue for Thiago Silva. The good thing is we still have some French speaking players still around the squad. I was going to say we've got some Brazilian players, but they've all gone to Arsenal now. So that's out of the, that's out of the window. But we've got, Thio we've got Kurt Zuma, who's next to him, who speaks French. We've got Azpilicueta, who spent time in France with Marseille as well. So he'll have an understanding of the French language. And N'Golo Kante in front of him as well. So... There'll be French players around him. He'll be able to assimilate well. Communication will be there. And I think also there is a basic understanding of English there with Thiago Silva. So we wouldn't have to worry too much about it being a case of, he's cut, of he comes in. He literally doesn't know a word of the language and he can't communicate with his players. Because defensively, I don't want to sound like a Yadar and be like, everyone has to speak English. But let's be real. If... It, especially when it comes to defensively, you need to be able to communicate with your back line, with your goalkeeper and with your midfielders as well. You need to be able to speak to each other a lot more and maintain the same defensive line. And that's where the English barrier can come in if it's a problem. But it's not going to be too much of a problem for Thiago Silva. So, yeah, I'm ready for this deal to happen as well. And like I was talking about this being a very big week for Chelsea. Thiago Silva looks like he's coming through the door. Ben Chilwell looks like he's coming through the door. And Kai Havertz looks like he's coming through the door as well. It'll be mad if we announce all three of them at the same time and we're doing this thing with the new free logo and everything like that. It would be peak Chelsea. But yeah, just put them through the doors ASAP.
Final piece of news, we're going to round off with Bakayoko and there's talk says loan to AC Milan have progressed and it's likely to settle on a 32 million euros combined loan and option to buy fee, which will mean Chelsea would get most of their money back. Now we were worried about the loan to option to loan to option to buy deal earlier because it just looked like they could keep him for a year and just say, nah, we don't want it, don't want him anymore, or we want him at a much more reduced rate because he's on a one year one year left of his contract after this loan deal's finished. But if we can turn it into an obligation to buy and force a specific fee for Bakayoko, maybe this will work decent for us long term. I'll be real, it will be hard for us to try and recoup at least half of the money that we want for him. AC Milan, they're a bit desperate, so hopefully we can try and fleece them a little bit, but they are going to want to go for the loan and option to buy first because they all already know that he's on a two-year deal as well, and they want to get rid of that first year too. I'm not going to worry too much because realistically, if we make a loss on Bakayoko, it is what it is. I mean, the player was bad enough when he was with us. It really just is what it is. We just need to get him off the payroll. If we can try and recoup half or more of the transfer fee, then Marina just needs a statue outside the bridge. I mean, she already needs a statue already for the magic she's done this year with the transfer window. And also recouping all of the wrong that's been made in the 17-18 transfer window as well. But yeah, if we can get Bakayoko sold for even 25 million, 20, 25 million, I'd be happy enough with that because really and truly it could be worse. But guys, this has been your Transfer Daily video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Are you guys as gassed as I am for this week? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care. Up the Charles.